ask you one question? Um, one of the things I'd like you to talk about is this issue of uh, the kind of scale that you need to be able to do pressure testing of long uh, of large buildings. Mm -hmm. I've heard of other situations where other organizations perhaps have maybe not, maybe you could talk a little bit about how much kit you have mm -hmm. and what that enables you to do and what, you know, folk who haven't got the same amount of kit, what that kind of forces them to do. So we've got over 20 uh, commercial grade blower door fans. So yeah, that allows us to test extremely large buildings, especially at a permeability rate of five. When it comes to how big we could test, we could test the Rialto at a permeability rate of around about three. Uh, two. Two? Two. If, if, they, oh. if Rialto Tower can meet passive house requirement, we can test it the whole building at one go. Testing buildings to a permeability rate of 20, to a certain extent, in a lot of cases, is actually impossible. Uh, just because of pinch point issues, mm -hmm. by the time you're inducing, say, 25 pascals at the vicinity of the fans, the pressure drop is so great at the extremities, it would drop to 10 or maybe even 5 pascal. Mm -hmm. It's not a compliant test. The all pressures throughout the whole building need to be within 5% of the pressure of the induced pressure. Mm -hmm. So leakier buildings, no matter how many fans you've got, they're actually, to a certain extent, impossible to mm -hmm. test, to test ac accurately. So a lot of the high-rise buildings, they're usually split up into, or they're split up by a plant room. So they're basically a building on top of a building. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're usually like HVAC zones. But Joseph, I'll let you go into compartmentalized testing, which, which isn't ideal, and that's where you use internal surfaces as an air barrier. The ideal case to deal with large building is to test the entire building at one go yep. with enough fans that's set up in a distributed fashion. For, for example, like a 35-story um, commercial building, we would set up fans on the roof level to pump into the stairwell, yep. and then in the any intermediate plant room level to also suck air in from the ambient, and then the ground, and potentially in the basement level if there is an uh, vent openly ventilated car park, so we can get um, air from different points and even it distributes to reduce the pathway of air needs to go through. That's the best way to test because it, um, it won't have any internal leakage through areas that are not supposed to be airtight to start with. But for other players that may not have enough fans to do that, I think the first option for them is to ask around the industry to try to borrow or hire until they get enough fans to do it the ideal way. Mm -hmm. But in some other scenario, for example, like um, in hospitals, where they always have stage handover, even if you have enough fans, you can't test the entire hospital at one go, then what to do? The second best option is to test fire compartment. Mm -hmm. Because usually a fire compartment is required to have fire and smoke tight construction. Yeah. And from our point of view, a smoke tight construction should also be airtight. So we virtually testing a building within a building yeah. that doesn't have any boundary that are not supposed to be airtight. Yeah. And then we use the same principle, try to distribute the fans as evenly throughout that portion of the building as possible. Okay, if we can't even get to that size, what we should do is what we call a pressure equalization test, or we call it guarded blower guarded door test. pressure neutralization. We test a portion of the building, but we use one additional floor or one additional zone. So we pressurize that smaller zone to the same pressure as the test zone to eliminate any air going between the guarding zone and the test zone. So it, by the same token, we try to eliminate any leakage that is not going through the designed air barrier. And the worst case a tester can do is just pick one room and then one a compartment test, what we call a unguarded simple compartment test. Usually the only time we would do that type of the test is during the extremely early stage of a project where they completed a small section of the building. And the purpose for us 
to do that kind of the test is just to show the tray and the side stuff where could be the source of leakage. Gotcha. It's more quali qual qualitative than quantitative. So you pressurize, fill it full of smoke, and you can see it coming yep. out the facade. Or, or you could you could also do compartment testing with apartments. Yep. <laughs> but that's about it. Because I mean, the other confusing or, thing. Or, or, or the other. There's only one type of building that we are happy to do compartment testing, which is apartments. Because each apartment should be able to contain the odor, pollutants, or air within. Yeah. Do you do much apartment testing? We've done a few. Mm. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, how do you assign surface areas for a compartment test? You know, it's, it's, it's impossible. Well, there are guidelines in the standard that we should only use the actual building envelope surface area. Any internal surface should not be included. Which means, I mean, you're not even going to get a leakage rate of 20 meters cubed well, per hour. Well, if, you, if you're just testing a room in an intermediate floor, mm. you are only able to use roughly 20% of Jeez. all the surface and then, area. And in all the of these other walls are not designed to be airtight. Yep. So <laughs> you've got a much worse yeah. result. You should have a much worse result. Yep. Correct. Mm.